Much love, everybody. I'm Julian Robertson. I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Love Bastards. Not with the back and forth, I'll cut you off, won't give a reason. It's a different hunger when you attack, cause you really need it. I treat the microphone. All right, today we got Julian Robinson off the porch with us today. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I appreciate y'all for having us. For having me, for sure. having you today, gang. Yeah, yeah. How you feeling? I feel good. I feel sure. good. I'm ready to be here. Thank you. Uh, glad to have you here, gang. Yeah. So what you out here working on in Atlanta? Man, for real, uh, just music endeavors. Uh, I have a new tape coming soon. You feel me? That's, it's already done, uh, but just really locking into that. I got some videos that I'm going to shoot uh, and just really networking, getting in tune with different people, uh, expanding. That's pretty much it. That's hard. So how often do you get a chance to come out here? Uh, so actually after college, I was in Cali for a little minute and then I came to Atlanta. So I was out here for like three to four months before I ended up going back to Chicago where I'm from. Uh, I haven't been back really since then. So it's been a few years, but it's always love being here for sure. For sure. How does it compare working out here in Atlanta versus working back at home in Chicago? Mm. It's for sure love. I, I would say uh, people are more susceptible to helping. So you can really connect and link with people. Uh, and people have the willingness to help you and see you doing your thing and want to reach out and help you. So I say from that standpoint, it's a little bit more space to maneuver and really connect and meet people and, and work, for sure. Uh, so for those who don't know, how would you describe life in Chicago? Uh, man, it's different. I say for like, for me, my experience would be for anybody that's seen Boys in the Hood, I grew up like Trey, you feel me? So like, just being in an environment, you're like, you're susceptible to seeing certain things. So I was used to seeing things, being in a certain environment, but that's by default. It doesn't matter if you're involved in whatever, or you're just on the outside looking in. By default, if you're in the inner city, you're gonna be affected by certain stuff. You're gonna see certain things. You might get involved in certain things, whatever the case may be, but uh, it's a beautiful city. I know it's like, a, it's a connotation over the city, like. You feel me? When people see it, it's like, how can you live there? Or whatever the case may be. But it's just like any other city, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, if, if, if the media would have put a platform on any metropolitan, major metropolitan city, it could have that light. Like, it's wild, it's reckless, it's crazy. But it's like that everywhere, you know what I mean? It's just, it's definitely, it's definitely wild. I'm not going to front like it's not wild, but I'm pretty sure it's like that in any city. If you go to a certain place, it's like, yeah, it's, it's somewhere where people get busy across the board. So. It's a great city. I'm thankful to be from Chicago. It made me who I am. Uh, and again, I, I would compare it to any other city. You feel me? It has its ups and downs, but it's a great city for sure. For sure. And you're originally from the South Side, correct? Yeah, South Side, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's different sides. It's really just the South Side and West Side, you know what I mean? But it's all love. It's all Chicago. But I'm originally from the South Side, born and raised. That's hard. Yeah. So how would you describe your childhood coming up? Uh, it was love, you feel me? I played, uh, I originally grew up playing basketball, so I didn't really start rapping until like seriously like two years ago. Uh, but it was really just basketball up until college. I played until my junior year in college. But uh, it was really just that, hooping, being outside. Uh, just like, you know what I mean? It was, it, was, it was a great childhood. I wouldn't say anything too crazy. Like I said, in anything else, you have ups and downs, like regardless of where you live or childhood. But I had a great childhood, you feel me? It was really just basketball, for real. That's dope. When would you say you jumped off the porch? Man, I'm gonna be real with you all the way. Like, that really wasn't me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I wasn't never really a street type type dude, to be real. I, I was really on, on women, on some player shit, for real. Like, that's how I was always coming. It's my cousin, so that's how we always really came, for real. It wasn't really no street vibe, for real. But that's why I said, just being from the crib, by default, your friends are involved in certain things, you see certain things. But that really wasn't my style ever, you feel me? I was on, always on some cool stuff, basketball and women, you feel me? So I wasn't, I really wasn't off the porch, you feel me? By default, you see certain things and you might be involved here and there, but it's like, nah, that really, that was never me at all. That's real. Yeah. My boy sure. went off to college and played basketball. Yeah, yeah, nah, for sure. It's about being real with the story. Like, that wasn't never me, you feel me? I wasn't outside like that, you feel me? I wasn't involved in stuff. I was in the gym and I was, and I was kicking it with women. That's so, all. Like, that's it. So yeah. walk us through your college experience, man. What college did you go to? Yeah, yeah. So originally I went to uh, University of Wisconsin, Platteville, uh, and then I transferred to Eastern Illinois University. Uh, both experiences were great, you feel me? But Eastern Illinois was where I had my, my main experience, you feel me? But it's love. It's, college is a great experience. I wouldn't take it back for anything. I had a great time. Still a lot of friends to this day, great experiences. So uh, 
it was, it was a blessing. And I stopped playing ball my junior year. So I played in Wisconsin. Then I walked on at Eastern Illinois University. I don't really play like that, but the opportunity was, uh, it was a great opportunity for me to be able to walk onto the team. Uh, but all in all, it was a great experience for sure. That's dope. Did you finish? Oh, yeah, yeah, I graduated, yeah. Yeah, That's 2015, hard. yeah. What was your major? Communication and public relations. Uh, yeah, originally, I'm gonna be real, originally it was broadcasting. Um, but like throughout, like for broadcasting, like when you go forward within that, you have to really be in the field and tying that with basketball, it kind of got strenuous. So I just sw sw switched up my major to be able to uh, graduate on time still. What would you say is the biggest life lesson you learned growing up? Mm. Well, being from Chicago, uh, I would definitely say just always being on point, uh, no matter what. Uh, and I think that's applicable to anything that you do and anywhere you go. Uh, I mean, it's a lot of stuff that I've learned, but definitely just being aware, aware of your surroundings, your environment, who you're with, like uh, what areas you're in and what times, you know what I mean? Just being on point and being aware, I think that's a pretty, like, that's a overall consensus, of, you know what I mean? Like what I, what I learned for sure. That's hard. What would you say is the biggest obstacle you've overcome so far in life? Man, it's a lot, man. I could go on for days. Uh, I would say the loss of like loved ones, particularly my mom. Uh, friends, like I said, growing up in Chicago, friends being, uh, being taken out, unfortunately, before I think they should be, or not, I'm not saying before they should be at all. You feel me, at all. Um, just things like that, you know what I mean? Losing certain people to violence seeing certain things happen, people going away to jail. Uh, like I said, growing up in the inner city, it's like, it's crazy, but it's love at the same time. It's a lot of things that you learn from that. But it, it's a lot, I could go on for days of things that, that have happened, but it's about progressing and, and persevering for real and moving forward. So it's like those things just, they should be used to make you better and, 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 and be applicable in your life to make you want to move forward in whatever endeavors you have, for sure. That's real. So when would you say you started making music, man? Man, seriously, 2019, so about two years ago. Uh, but what's crazy is like, man, looking back on it, we were, so our cousin named Sin, he, he's, a, he's a Chicago artist, his name is Seneca, but he goes by Godson Cold, like I say, one of the coldest artists in Chicago, for real. Uh, he, he's always been rapping since we were young, like we would either be at my house, my cousin Dave's crib, our cousin Seneca's crib, but he made beats and he rapped. So he was doing this when we were in high school and younger. Um, and in high school, we would play around with it, like, you know what I mean, freestyling here and there, we would pull up, he'd be making beats. Um, but as time went on, like, I would always pull up to the studio where he was, I'd be like, cuz, where you at? I'd be, he'd be at the studio, I'd pull up, and I was always around it, I always loved music, but like I said, I played basketball for my entire life, so I really wasn't thinking about taking on music seriously. Um, but it's actually, to be, it's, it's crazy how things come full surface. Um, so like I said, after I left California, I came to Atlanta. And that's when I started like writing, for real. Um, I wasn't really, I wasn't telling anybody, I wasn't showing it, but I was writing. Um, and then after a while, I started thinking like, all right, I can maybe do something with this. Um, and like I said, 2019, I started like really writing and seeing like, all right, putting stuff out there. And actually, my cousin Dave was one of the first to hear me actually like spit yeah. something for real, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was tight. yeah. and then my co our cousin Seneca, and he was like, you know, hey, you should you should think about start like taking it serious for real. And at first I was like, nah, because we have a lot of homies who really do it. And I was like, I'm not trying to hop on the bandwagon or anything like that. But uh, I found passion in it. And in school, my favorite subjects were and the like sub subjects were uh, like writing papers and public speaking, which is a, a it's a direct, you know what I mean? It's a direct correlation for real to rapping. So. After that, and, getting, and, and really getting good feedback, I was like, no, nah, let me see how far I can take this. So we're here now with it. That's hard, man. Appreciate it. Sure. Who would you list as some of your musical influences? Man, man, I'm locked in uh, to real hip hop MC, so for sure, Nas, that's my favorite artist of all time. Uh, Jadakiss, Raekwon, uh, Dave East. Man, I could go on for days. Big L, The Locks. For me, I like, I'm really into like real, like real spitters for real people, like real lyricism. But I listen to everything, you feel me? But as far as my influences, it comes from like real hip hop. So yeah, just for those who list a few, for sure. That's hard. So when would you say you started taking music seriously full time? Well, you know what I mean? It, I, I wouldn't say it's full time right now because I'm not on, you feel me? But uh, 
you know what I mean, still have to work a job or still have to do what you have to do to make it, but uh, the pursuit is full time. So I'm full time pursuing, you know what I mean, music, everyday writing, you know what I mean, connecting with people, shooting videos in the studio. So on top of, like I said, quote unquote, not being on yet, that pursuit is full time. It's every day, you feel me, until that opportunity really presents itself to be like, all right, I don't have to work anymore or whatever the case may be. I can really take music full-fledged, serious, which I'm doing now, but actually like recouping bread from it, whatever the case may be. But it's a full-time thing right now, for sure. That's hard. What would you say is the difference between an MC and a rapper? Man, so I think MCs really, uh, they predicate everything off lyricism and meaning. To be real, I think if you think about the top MCs, though they could be authors, they could write books, you feel me? Because when you're telling stories, there's no difference than you writing it down and putting it in book form or just putting it in as far as people retaining it audio-wise. Um, I think rappers, they more so, it's more so like a vibe or sometimes people are not putting any thought into it, you know what I mean? So for being an MC or a lyricist, you're having a specific intent on like, nah, when I write or when I go in the booth, there's gonna be meaning behind whatever I say, you know what I mean? So I think really the, if we could just have it as a soul, word is going in with intent, just the intent. So the intent on uh, uh, having like meaning, uh, your lyrics like mattering or whatever the case may be. And with rappers, it's just like, I'm tr like rappers are either trying to create a vibe or they're just going in and saying anything, you feel me? But I think it's just the intent that makes a difference. That's all. Do you freestyle or do you write? Man, so, Man, uh, he, I mean, I could freestyle right now if that's cool. You feel Come me? But, on, but wait I, a minute. Man. All right, but for sure, I got something. I said, Look me in my eyes, we ever meet. And if you timid, I'm going to treat you like a sheep. MLK, I got a dream. We were walking to the store with all that change. We were broke. Hoop dreams, I used to have them until reality set in. You better find a way, because ain't nobody giving lessons. All them jams we were in the shorties, I'm thankful for them blessings. The baddest women, I'm used to having. It ain't no secret. My cousin hit my line and said, Nigga, go undefeated. These niggas show all they really got for the gram, they tweaking. I don't believe them. What is you thinking? Learn the game from some real OGs. You better learn to keep your mouth closed when you come around me. I got a flow to make you stop the beat like, damn, who was he? And if I had a first, just know she's comparing you to me. Hoodied up, so call me mellow. I had your shorty, yeah, hello. These niggas just talking cap and be really softer than Jello. It's the fellow. Angelic with the rhyme flowing schemes. And to be honest, most of my niggas really had triple beams. Super tired of being broke. It's time to get to the cream. What do you mean? And if you've seen what I've seen, you probably rat and come clean. This ain't a dream, this is reality though. And from a city where you better keep it silent cause shit could flip and get violent. Find me somewhere in the cup with some women. We talking knowledge, flow is timeless. Better get a grasp of what you could do. I block you out when you talk all them stories. You Dr. Seuss, niggas is fools and they fool too. If we talking rules, I bend them too. Like your shorty when she comes in the room, fuck a protect. You seen a tech and what it does to the flesh? You ever heard a mother screams cause a baby got stretched? I speak that real talk, that other shit, I cannot relate. Niggas is fake, I call them Hannah Montana. They breed that jailbird music to have niggas cuffed up and locked in them slammers. When we were broke, me and my cousin Dave were running out stores. Ever been broke, then you could understand that we wanted more. This is the real. Yeah, this is the real. Chicago, we here. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Thanks. Okay. That was hard. Appreciate it. So how sure. will you describe your current thoughts on the rap game? Uh, I, do, I do think, I'm going to be honest, I think it's like, a, it's like a library for real. So what I mean by that is the book that you want is in a library. You feel me? So like whatever, you, whatever book you want is there. Now there might be certain books that are in the forefront that you might be kind of confused on. Like how is this picture book like in the forefront or whatever the case may be. You might have to ask the librarian for like, like a real novel or like whether it's nonfiction or fiction but it's in there so I look at, at the rap game like that too like whatever music you want it's there you just might have to do a little bit of digging for it like now what's on the forefront it's not how it used to be which times change you know what I mean so if you want something a little bit more lyrical you might have to do a little bit of digging for it if you want to catch a vibe it's out there so whatever type of music you want it's there and I think that's a good thing too I think the, resur the resurgence of like more lyricism is starting to come back again. I do think that I'm starting to hear people kind of speaking a little bit more, but uh, all in all, I, I think uh, it's a good variety, but again, whatever you want is there. So you just have to do like a little bit more looking for whatever you, whatever you want now. That's real. For sure. What would you say is the biggest risk you took that paid off? The biggest risk? I'm gonna be real. I think being here is one of them for real. 
you know what I mean? I would, I mean, anything that you do when you take a leap of faith is a risk, you know what I mean? Especially when you're not receiving anything back from it, you're just putting that energy out. But I think uh, taking rap serious, that's a risk, you know what I mean? Uh, a, a lot of things, I think a lot of decisions that we make, you know what I mean? They can be looked at as risk, but it's really for like the, the, like the progression of what you wanna do. But I think, like I said, being here, it's an opportunity. Some might look at it as a risk, but I think it's a good risk, you feel me, being here exposure but uh there's, there's a lot of different ways that that risk can be looked at that's hard what would you say is the biggest sacrifice you made for your career now nah, for sure i would definitely say uh well i think i've always been good with, with bread with money but uh just being intentional like you know what i mean like where whereas you know what i mean you might be able to go ahead and buy some shoes or whatever or buy some clothes i'm putting that towards studio time or i'm putting that towards a video so being, again, very intentional on, uh, on what I do and, and, and those endeavors, for sure. For sure. How would you describe the music scene in Chicago right now? Uh, again, I'm going to be honest. I think it's, it's a plethora of different music options out there. So whatever you're looking for is there. You have people that are talking about you know, what they're involved in and what they're doing uh, on a street level. You have people who are talking on a conscious level uh, but, but again, it's, it's whatever, whatever you're looking for. And I think, like I said, the connotation for Chicago or behind Chicago is it's overly rough or it's crazy, whatever the case may be. And like I said, Chicago, is, it's, a, it's a real city for sure, but it's a lot of intelligent, like smart people in the city as well that are in the midst of that as well, who are speaking on real topics that are bringing lyricism, singing or rapping, whatever the case may be. So I think it's a, it's a combination of different things for real. But again, you just have to look for it. You're gonna, just like in life, if you, you're looking for whatever you want to look for, you're going to find it. You know what I mean? So as far as the music scene in Chicago, it's everything. You know what I mean? But you just have to find it. You know what I mean? For sure. That's real. Talk to us about your new singles, Elevated. Yeah, yeah. So I just dropped Elevated. That's a, uh, that's a song more so for like the women. It's an upbeat song, like a dancing type song. Uh, I'm going to be real. I, I think it, it's good to have a mixture. My music more so is predicated on like lyricism, you know what I mean, uh, rapping for real, uh, with intent. But I think it's it's good to have a switch. So have you can't you don't want to just come one way all the time. So it's like I don't want to just be barred up all the time. You got to have something for women to dance to or women to like groove to as well. Either, even though a lot of women like 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 bars and stuff like that too. You know what I mean, like mu music with meaning. But this more so is like it's a uh, it's a more upbeat song. It's relaxed. It's chill. It's for the ladies. Uh, it's, it's, it's called Elevated, so uh, yeah, it's more so predicated for the women. That's hard. What about Off the Leash? Off the Leash, yeah, yeah, that's one of my favorites. Now that's, that's me coming more so on some like real, real bars, really spitting for real. Um, and and it, it's really just like bars, bars, bars. There's really no hook on it or anything like that. It's just me going full-fledged. Uh, so yeah, that's... I'm gonna be real, that's probably one of my favorite, my favorite songs. But again, that's just a song that's just, just me going in lyrically, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Are there plans for an upcoming project? Yeah, yes sir. I have something coming very soon. I, I like to be, uh, to be like mysterious as far as like name dropping, you know what I mean? And, uh, but I, I think for sure it's gonna, it's gonna be a very powerful tape. It's only gonna be about four or five songs, uh, but the cover art is gonna be powerful. Um, and the title, uh, it's more so like an EP. But the title and the cover, it's going to be very powerful. I'm, I'm dropping it very, very soon. So I think this, again, this will be, each time I drop something, I want to be better. I want to be better. So I think this is by far my best piece of work, for sure. I'm excited about dropping it. For sure, man. Can't yeah. wait to listen. Thank you. Thank you. Talk to us about your grind as an independent artist. For sure. Yeah, I think, man, it's a daily thing, for real. Uh, and I think anybody who says, like, man, it, it, there, there aren't times that come to where you like, man, I don't know if I should, I, I should be pursuing this anymore or doing it. Like, that feeling is real, especially when you don't have any backing or whatever the case may be. Uh, and, and that, like I said, that feeling is definitely real. But I think when you have understanding of, like, what you provide uh, and anything, any product or any type of, like, ability, I think you have to let that, you have to resonate within that and be like, nah, I know I can do this. I know what I'm providing is needed. And I know I can, I, I can, I can do this at a top-notch level. So I think really just having that self-belief. Prayer is powerful too. So it's like when you have those doubts, it's like now nah, you have to really pray and really ask for guidance. But I think it's a, it's a, it's a daily thing for real. Because there are days where it's like, nah, 
I always feel like I could do it, but it's days where it's like, man, I don't know. Man. You feel me? Like we had these conversations all the time. We really just had it coming here. Yeah. Uh, but, but really just knowing like, what I think when you have a certain ability and you know you could do something, you have to dig deep and be like, nah, regardless if things aren't manifesting right now, I know I can do this. So it's, sure. a, it's a daily thing for sure. For sure. Yeah. Would you ever consider signing to a major label situation? I would if it made sense. And it, it would have to make sense. Like I'm not just, even though like I, I want that access, I'm not an artist that's just eager to jump into something because I mean, I, I do, I watch a lot of interviews. I do a lot of reading as well. So I, I wouldn't just jump into something just because, or just for like financial benefit in the moment when on the back end you losing bread or the situation isn't right. But uh, all in all, like, yeah, I would. I, there, there are definitely a few, like for example, like a TDE or a Dreamville or something along those lines. Yeah, I, I definitely would for sure if it made sense. That's hard. Yeah. What about some of the artists you would like to work with one day? Man. I, man, so like right now, it's a lot, man. I, I would definitely want to work with Dave East, Jada Kiss. But then again, I like to, I like a lot of R&B too. So I would definitely want to work with like Snow Allegra, Jill uh, Scott. yeah, Jill Scott, I Am DDB. Yeah. Uh, who else? It's it's a lot of like women R&B singers that I would want to lock in too with. But it, as far as rapping, like I said, Dave East, Jada Kiss, uh, Method Man. Uh, Raekwon. I'm going to be real, it's probably a lot of like old school artists as far as new school, new artists. Uh, it's an artist out the crib uh, from Chicago. His name is Mick Jenkins. I would definitely want to lock in with him. Uh, who else do I like who's coming right now? I don't know. I can't really think of too many right now, but I really want to lock in with more so like R&B singers and real spitters for real. That's hard. Yeah. What else are you working on right now? Uh, so right now I'm, I'm about to shoot a video. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm just getting things prepared for, for dropping this, uh, this new EP that I'm going to release pretty, much, pretty soon. And really at this point, I'm really just trying to connect with the right people and have the right people hear my music. Because uh, I think it's, it's coming to the time where it's like it needs to be heard on a bigger scale. Uh, and so I'm more so like focusing on, because I have a lot of music tucked right now, but I'm more so trying to make connections and meet people so that the right people can hear certain things so that things can progress to whereas, like I said, I could do this full time, you know what I mean? Every day, which I am doing, but like seriously doing it full time. So right now it's more so about the connections and, uh, and meeting people, which is what I'm doing now. That's hard. Any for last sure. words and shout outs? Uh, for sure, yeah, for sure. I want to thank you all for the opportunity, for, for one. Uh, to our cousin Sin in Chicago, he goes by God's son, keep doing your thing. And then I want to shout out some of the guys who've been sending me beats, you feel me, just off the love for free. One of the guys, one of the homies from Chicago, his name is M.U. Uh, he makes beats. Uh, my boy Kenyatta, he's from the crib too. He's out in Vegas now. He's been sending me a lot of the beats too. And they, and they send them off the strength. You know what I mean? Like no payments. It's just, it's just off the love, which I greatly appreciate. Uh, and then uh, my boy Levi, he mixes and masters pretty much uh, everything for me as well. What he did at the crib. Uh, but yeah, for sure those shout outs. Everybody back in Chicago, uh, my cousin Dave for being here, you feel me? Uh, and yeah, just everybody who's, who's, who's grinding, any, any independent artist, you feel me? I understand the struggle, I understand what you're going through, but if you have a talent, don't stop, you feel me? Keep going, pursue those aspirations uh, until you get to where you want to, for sure, and God bless everybody. Julian Robinson, appreciate having you today, gang. Nah, I appreciate you, for real, all of you all, thank you. For sure. Thank you. I'm not with the back and forth, I'll cut you off, won't give a reason It's a different hunger when you attack, cause you really need it I treat the microphone like a punching bag and I start on